What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over seven SEO techniques and they're gonna be long-term techniques that are never gonna result in you getting a Google penalty. So different search engine optimization strategies that are gonna work essentially forever. So this is part 17 of my SEO tutorial playlist. You can find the entire playlist in the video description if you wanna go back and watch some of the other videos. So we're gonna get right into this. Number one, research your top 100 keywords. You can pull more keywords, but I would start with 50 to 100 keywords. Group them together, so you wanna take them by theme, essentially what the topic is, and group them by topics and subtopics, and start planning some of your content. So essentially what you wanna do is take these keywords and create them into sort of topics and subtopics, so you can start creating content around all these different keywords that are gonna be relevant for your website. So a quick example here for number one. So if we're looking at landing pages, the top five keywords for landing pages are landing page design, tutorial, examples, builders, WordPress. For keyword research, it's tools for SEO, Google Keyword Planner, keyword research for Google Ads, and competitor keyword research. So what you wanna do is you wanna start by pulling in some of these top keywords for your business, and then what you can do is start creating content around all these different keywords. So something like landing page examples could be 10 awesome landing page examples you can learn from. You could do landing page WordPress plugins. You can do five easy ways to create landing pages with WordPress. Keyword research tools, you might do something like 10 keyword research tools. So essentially what you wanna do is take a keyword and create content that would satisfy the user intent when someone would search one of these keywords directly into Google. When someone's looking for keyword research tools, they want a long list of different keyword research tools, some of the benefits, the pros, the cons. They might want free options, premium options. So take all that into account as you're creating your content after you do your keyword research. So that's gonna be number one. Number two is gonna be to create and or update keyword focused content every single day. So if there's anything I can get across to you, it's that consistency with creating content. As you do your keyword research and you start to come up with your content strategy, the next step is to consistently create content every day. So the best way to do this is to come up with some sort of content calendar. So the most basic look at a content calendar would essentially be you creating different types of content you wanna create around your top keywords. So in this step, you could do something like five landing page designs that you can learn from, landing page tutorial for beginners. So you can start coming up with what your content is gonna be about. And then what you wanna do is date each piece of content and you wanna do this throughout the entire year. So let's say you're starting January 1st, start coming up with a calendar so you can remain consistent because that's gonna be the best way for you to consistently increase your rankings as well. I'll tell you from everything I know about search engine optimization, your website will stay stagnant or even decrease traffic if you don't work on it, if you're not creating new pages of content for your top keywords. Now, on the other hand, if you're publishing something new every single day and keeping everything relevant and up to date, so let's just say January 1st, 2019, I start creating all of this content, then next year, all I have to do is keep everything up to date. Just make sure everything's relevant. If I have a landing page builder that people can no longer use, just remove it from the article, maybe put a new one in there that people can use. If there's a new landing page WordPress plugin, just go back to each of these articles and make sure you're keeping them relevant over time. So that's the best tip I can give you is to be consistent as you're creating content because if you create five posts this month and then you go three months without creating anything, you're gonna start losing rankings. And I can tell you from experience that that's exactly what's gonna happen. And on the flip side, if you stay consistent, you're gonna gain rankings, you're gonna gain search engine traffic. Next is gonna be number three. And number three is gonna be to focus on creating comprehensive content for one topic and all of its subtopics. So the easiest example I can give you here is over the holiday season, I created this article, Farmhouse Christmas Decorations and Holiday Decor. So this is a huge guide article, and if we come down here, you can see browse this article. So each individual link that you see here is gonna keep you on this page. So if I go to Farmhouse Christmas Ornaments, we're still in my Farmhouse Christmas Decorations page. I listed some different ornaments for sale. And what I did is I linked off to my Farmhouse Christmas Ornaments page. So if someone clicks here, they can go to see Farmhouse Christmas Ornaments and Rustic Ornaments. So essentially what you wanna do, coming back over here, is to use this one topic and create a comprehensive guide page and then create new pages for each individual subtopic. So if we come back a few steps, and we look at this example in step one, what you would wanna do is create a huge comprehensive guide to landing pages and then create each individual page of content here and link all of these pages together. So you have this comprehensive guide, maybe rather than doing a ton of landing page examples in your comprehensive guide, you do one or two examples and say, if you wanna see more examples, check out the 10 landing page examples we have here. 
this shows that you're completely covering a subject, all the topics and subtopics around one specific subject. So if we come back over here and we're looking at just farmhouse Christmas decor. So one of the main things is farmhouse Christmas decorations. So I need to keep breaking that down from farmhouse decor, farmhouse Christmas decor, and then even into some of these farmhouse Christmas ornaments and some of these other things that people are looking for during the holiday season with a farmhouse theme. Make sure you're creating comprehensive content for one topic and each individual subtopic and use your keyword research to come up with these topics and subtopics and keep doing this over and over and over again. Number four is to create supporting visual content like videos, images, and infographics. So me personally, I do better with creating these videos and publishing them to my YouTube channel. I would say that's my number one priority. And then the other thing I try to do is create blog posts for a lot of my different videos and then also create supporting images as well. So when people need to see screenshots of how to do certain things, or if I can create an infographic to give them just a quick overview of exactly what I'm creating content about. For a quick example, so on my website, surfsidepbc.com, if you come to this article, SEO competitive analysis and competitor keyword research. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that I have a video embedded here. So it's a blog post. I have a video here. Keep scrolling down. I have a little infographic here. So six step free SEO competitive analysis process. So people can go through these step by step process. If they want to learn more about specific steps, they can keep scrolling down and reading the article. And if we come over here, so another blog post I have is Google Search Console. So this is an example of a comprehensive guide page. I have Google Search Console complete guide for 2020. If we scroll down, I have my updated video tutorial here. Keep scrolling down. I go through the step-by-step -step process, verifying your website with a screenshot. So people can easily learn how to do all these things, especially if they're not familiar with using Google Search Console. It's helpful to have a visual there. So number four, make sure you're creating this supporting visual content if it makes sense for your business, videos, images, and infographics. So it's really difficult as a business to create blog posts, videos, images, infographics. So if you have to outsource some of these things, that might be something you want to do. But when you're getting started, I would say focus on just one or two things. So maybe you just want to do blog posts, make sure you have images there as well. Or if you're doing videos, make sure that you're doing blog posts along with your videos. So maybe you just want to focus on a couple of things at first and then start to enhance your content with infographics, with more images and screenshots. But people like to learn in different ways. Some people prefer video, some people prefer to read. So you wanna make sure that you're creating content for every single type of learner. So that's gonna be number four. SEO technique number five is to essentially make sure you're staying organized with your website. So your website architecture, your internal links, and creating these content hubs is really vital for the success of your website. So starting with content hubs, so with my farmhouse Christmas decorations article, this is a content hub. So I have this large comprehensive overview and then all of these different subtopics down here at the bottom and I have separate articles for each individual subtopic. And the same thing over here with Surfside PPC. So I have Google Search Console, complete guide for 2020. I also link to all of my other Google Search Console articles on my website and I'll embed some of my other videos as well like tips and tricks and different things that people who might not be looking for a full tutorial, looking for little tips and best practices. So essentially what you wanna do is, again, creating that comprehensive content and creating these content hubs. So even using the landing pages example earlier and the keyword research example earlier, those would be examples of content hubs if you have one of these large comprehensive guide pages and then you also have subtopics as well that link off from that content hub that you've created. Internal links, so that's the same exact thing. You wanna make sure that you're linking to all the different relevant pages on your website. It not only helps Google index and crawl your website, but it also helps people who are visiting your website to see some of these supporting pages if they wanna to continue to enhance their knowledge more and more about the topics that you're creating content about. Now, website architecture, you wanna make sure you're staying as organized as possible as you're creating more and more pages of content and just pages on your website. So you wanna make sure you're creating categories here. Just a simple example, if I have a shop page and let's say I have a furniture section in there, some of the different pages below furniture would be accent, bedroom, and living room. And then within each of those, you're gonna have even more categories or subcategories pages that would go back to the previous subcategory. So accent furniture, you can see accent chairs, tables, benches, bookshelves, bedroom furniture, bed frames, dressers, headboards. So each of these, you wanna make sure that your website architecture is as organized as possible because then as Google is ranking your website, they're gonna be able to say, okay, this website is very organized. If someone comes to this website, they're looking for bedroom furniture, they're gonna be able to find exactly what they're looking for because the website is easy to use for the user. While this seems really straightforward, it's actually really difficult to keep your website organized as it continues to grow and grow because 
you may have hundreds or even thousands of pages that need to be organized. So it's something that you do need to focus on because it helps the people who are visiting your website and it helps Google rank you higher because your website is organized with a good architecture. Number six is to improve your top pages and optimize for your top search queries in Google Search Console. So you wanna make sure you verify your website with Google Search Console. And once you have your website verified, you're gonna be able to see your, the performance of your website in the Google Search Engine. So right now we're looking at beachfronttocore.com. One of my favorite things to do is just come in here and when you're in the performance report, look at any set of dates and I look at clicks and impressions and I'll scroll down and looking at pages first here, I'll just rank them by impressions and I'll look at what my top pages are by impressions. You can look by clicks as well. And then as I scroll down here, I try to find areas where the clicks aren't matching up with the amount of impressions I'm getting. So you can incorporate average CTR in here and look for these low average CTR pages. You can use some different filters. So as you create filters here, you can create filters down here to look for pages that have a certain amount of impressions and a low click through rate. So generally what I'll do is I'll just look down the list and I can quickly pick out, okay, this page right here, low click through rate compared to these other pages. Keep coming down this page right here, low click through rate, keep coming down. And I just try to find some of these low click through rate pages. So here's a few more. So if I see something here with 934 clicks and less impressions than some of these pages up here at the top, then that means that there's some areas of opportunity for me here where maybe I need to improve my title tag. Maybe I need to enhance the existing content that I've created. So there's a lot of opportunities you can find using the Google Search Console. So as you start creating more and more of this content, you can always find opportunities for optimization here, looking at pages and then looking at queries here. Again, I'll look at the top impressions and just try to find some of these queries that I can probably improve upon where I'm seeing these low clicks and a lot of impressions. And you can do the same thing with clicks and look at some of the top clicks for individual search queries because it's just gonna help you find more and more ideas and opportunities on your website. So if I scroll down here, nautical lamps, over 5,000 impressions and only six clicks over the last three months. So this is a search query that I could definitely start to optimize a little bit better for so that I can increase this click through rate and hopefully over time just continue to drive more and more impressions as well because that's how you're going to drive more search engine traffic back to your website. So number six, make sure you're using the Google Search Console so you can improve those top pages and optimize for all of those search terms that you're already ranking for. Number seven and last but not least is to increase backlinks to your website and use external links to other websites as well. So backlinks are a really important Google ranking factor and the best backlinks you can get are people who are writing their own pages of content and link back to your page naturally. So if someone's writing about competitive analysis and they find my article helpful, they can link to this page and that's gonna be a great backlink for me. So the best types of backlinks are ones that are completely natural, ones you're not paying for, and ones where people are choosing to put your link in their content. Now there's other ways to get backlinks, couple ideas, you can do guest blogging. So if you blog on other websites, you can link back to your website. I would say it's not the best long-term strategy. It could be a good strategy, but you might be better off just creating a lot of content on your own website. The other thing you can do is just reach out to people and just say, hey, I, I saw you have this piece of content on your website. I think it can be enhanced if you link to my page, if you embed my video. So that's another option you can do. I personally don't do many of those. I just try to create the best content I can. Hopefully I can get my content ranking high. So then as people are looking for different ideas with competitive analysis, maybe they're looking for things about Google Search Console, they can find my content and they can link back to it. It takes a lot of time to build up a great backlink profile, so I wouldn't recommend ever buying backlinks. I don't recommend doing anything where you're trying to game the system because Google has seen everybody try to do everything, so there's not many black hat type techniques that really work when it comes to increasing your backlinks. Now the other thing is don't be afraid to use external links to other websites. So I'll link off to websites all the time. So if I come over here and we're looking at my competitive analysis, we scroll down, I'll link to my own video on YouTube, keep coming down, and you can see I have some free tools to find SEO competitors. So I have an image here, but I go through each tool individually and I show people how to use the free versions of some of these tools, even if they're premium tools, and I link off to each individual tool here. So don't be afraid to use external links, whether you're trying to link to someone who has created a great piece of content that's gonna enhance your content, or you're just linking to a specific keyword tool or something like that. So with links, I would say the internal links on your website, the external links on your website, and then backlinks in general, all really important for increasing your Google rankings. 
increasing backlinks I think is the hardest thing with search engine optimization because most websites aren't just going to link to any old page. They want to find really great content that people can interact with and learn more from. So you need to be creating those resources on your website so that people do link back to your website. So that's seven long-term SEO techniques. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.